Yo, what's up everybody? This is your girl Alicia here to give you my review on last night's episode of Star Episode 17. Don't remember the name of it, but I have it right by the time I post the video. <sighs> I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Um, honestly, I enjoyed. I thought last night was a pretty good episode. But I'm just done. I'm just so done. Because every episode just seems as if I'm watching the episode that aired before it. Simply because there's just no growth in the characters and it's like you're watching the same thing over and over and over again. Um, I'm going to hop around um, from the, the situations on last night's episode. This episode here, this was the episode I, I, re I have received the most messages and I've received the most messages on all my social media platforms. A lot of it had to do with um, the same question or a lot of it was Angel, excuse me, was Simone, um, was Simone and Angel. However, majority of it was um, my how do I feel about Star giving up a baby for adoption? How does it compare to Alex um, getting a, having an abortion? So I really want to start with the, 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 the Star, um, what's his name? Uh, Noah <laughs> and um, Jackson scene and i'm gonna venture out from there but i want to start there that scene was so interesting and that scene was so important and, and if there's someone who happens to watch this video that happens to be a stand for the character of star i really want you to communicate with me like forget the fact that she's your favorite forget the fact that you stand her to just truly talk about this 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 woman as a as a character when she came in to the studio, homegirl said, well, I guess, you know, Meek and Drake aren't the only ones, you know, getting it together or whatever, which was cute. I'm like, but y'all a day late and a dollar short because how long has Drake and Meek Mill have been, you know, none, put their differences to the side. But OK, I give y'all that. So basically, she went to Jax to ask him for a track that uh, Miss Bruce got for the girls. And he basically said, you know, you can have it. You know, you can have it. I see what you're trying to do with getting your life back together for David. So you can have it. He didn't charge her. There was no upfront. He didn't talk about back front, no back money. Just you can have the track. And that's a blessing in itself because obviously we know that um, Jackson is this up and coming, well to do new music producer out of nowhere. He's this fabulous music producer. And, um, so when Noah began to tell that, you know, Star was giving up the baby for adoption, did y'all hear what she said? She said, I'm giving up, she said, I'm, I'm doing it to protect him from you. So it seems like every scene or every time this topic gets brought up, she has a different excuse as to why she's going the adoption route. You talk about how you don't want to be like your mother. You know you're not ready. You know that nothing will come before your career yet. And still, when you're around Noah, you flip the script and say that you're doing this to protect your son from him. And I was like, wait a minute. This is a, this is a man who, yes, has issues and has problems. However, he is working through it, who wants to be a father, who wants to be a part of his child's life. He's willing to take full custody because you don't want the child, you know, you, you feel like giving your baby away is the best thing to do. And that's okay if you feel that way, but you have a parent, the biological, as of right now, parent that's saying, I'm willing to take care of the child. So it, it just, it's very interesting how they got this character going. And so all the people who saying that star is that you're, you're happy that the show is talking about, um, postpartum depression, or you're happy that they're making this a topic of discussion. In what way have they specifically said that they're dealing with the topic of postpartum depression? Because we all know Star has been the same since episode one of season one. There has been no change. She's the same person. So this is not out of the ordinary for who they have created her to be. So I want to know in what way is she suffering from postpartum depression? I've been around women who have suffered from that and they change emotionally psychologically mentally emotionally they really deal with with some things not saying that her character isn't dealing with it but the decision to put up jacks excuse me davis for adoption has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that star is suffering from postpartum depression so we need to dead that um conspiracy theory because it's not true so when jackson hears noah say you know she get trying to go with the baby for adoption he's like what 
you know, like he, you know, that's none of your business. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got, she told Jackson, basically, you got everything out of me that you wanted. You got a career. Basically, you welcome. <laughs> I gave you that. You got this unproblematic chick. Keep that. You know what I'm saying? And he was, and she was like, you have no business asking me about my life because you walked out of it. And he was like, are you serious? Like walked out of your life? And let's stop right there. This selfishness that, that most star stands tend to overlook. You went to this man's house while he was minding his own good God business, told him that you were pregnant by him, knowing that you had slept with two men in close proximity, told him that it was his child. He completely changed his life for you and this baby that was coming forth. The fact that this man had to find out that the child that he thought was his was not his after you gave birth to this black baby. Let's talk about this baby, okay? This baby get darker every episode. <laughs> I'm like, really, really, people? Really? Who's responsible for the casting of this baby? I don't know what's going on with the two original babies or the three original babies that, that they had. But this baby here, I said, you know what? I'm mad at y'all because we all know good dog on well. That baby fully black. I don't know what they doing. This baby get darker every episode. Gee, I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyway, back to the scene. Um, you know, where basically Jackson told her that, you know, she, he prays that um her son is nothing like her. She's a cold hearted bee, which I totally agree with everything that he stated because I'm like, you one of the things I really hate about the character of Star and how they have create, created her to be, she does not take responsibility for the hurt that she inflicts on other people. When it's her, it's woe me, why me? I don't understand why you're doing this to me. But when she does it to other people, well, I have never seen anyone to really do that to her in, in that kind of way. But when she inflicts this, this pain on people, she totally negates what she does or it's not important. And I hate that about her. That's why I was like, it's, it's like I'm constantly watching the same episode because there is no transition of um, maturity with these people. They do the same things over and over again. And if they get renewed, you're going into a fourth season. And it's like, are we going to still see the same thing? Or is it going to be the same thing? I, I hope it's not. Whatever. So after Jackson says what he says, you know, she pushes him yet, putting her hands on somebody's child. And you know what I'm saying? She walks out, which I love the scene. I was glad that Jackson said what he said to her because you could tell it pricked in a way. That's why she reacted the way that she did. Now, to this whole thing, well, I, I get to that with the whole um, situation with the comparisons of Star and Alex when it comes to the adoption and um, the abortion. Now, Miss Bruce was truly the comedic relief in this episode. And I think it was like one of the first things um, she told uh, Carlotta, like, look, are you handling, you know, what you need to handle? Are you okay? Because I don't want to get another call from Madonna telling me you peed on yourself on no people flow. I was like, <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Miss Bruce was just so funny in this episode. And she talked about how she was about to go put on her Michelle Obama's because, you know, she had feet problem or something like that. We know Michelle Obama footwell. She normally in, in some tennis shoes over there. She real relaxed, real chill. Um, so I thought that was funny. Miss Bruce was definitely the, the comedic relief in this episode. Now, we going backwards with Carlotta Hill. Now, you would think at a big event they wouldn't have her in that turquoise. What was that, turquoise? I don't even know what color it was. Now, I thought the style was cute, but maybe not the color and not for this particular um uh, uh, situation, celebration. I'm like, Carlotta, come on, you know, I don't know. Speaking of Carlotta, let me tell y'all something. Oh, Jesus. That man that's playing her love interest right now, which we find out he's the actual billionaire um, that was looking for one of the artists to do residency um, with him. And let me tell you, I don't think I've ever wanted somebody that I've seen on the TV screen. <laughs> That man, for to me, he is fine as hell. He's sexy as hell. The way he speaks, his demeanor, his presence, everything. I was watching him and I was like, oh my God, Lord, forgive me for I am lusting greatly in my heart and in my body right now. You know how you have people like, you know, you're going to fight them or something. You'd be like, oh, on site. And we all know what on site means. Ain't going to be no talking, ain't no negotiate. When I see you, I'm putting hands on you. That's how I feel about this man here. Like, Lord, if I'm a, if I'm a hoe for a day, I'm going to choose him. <laughs> I'm dead serious. But the man, he's just fine. So, you know, he he's just fine. And um, 
I just had to give him a shout out because he's so fine. But um, like I said, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be all over the place. So we find out that I'm trying to figure this out, and y'all help me too if y'all know. So we see that Roland repossesses Alex's car. Okay. Where's Derek's car? Because didn't Derek get a car? At least I thought he got a car. And then did he's on, so let me talk to the dude. Did y'all see that Derek had money in his hand as if he was going to pay the the dude of you possession repossessing the car not to do it? I wish I could zoom in. I don't know how much money Derek had. I said, but Derek, you ain't got enough money in your wallet and or bank account to stop this from happening. So I'm like, what the hell? What Put, put that money back in your pocket, boy. What? I said, Father, they just they just wrote stuff for him to do. I'm thoroughly convinced they really just wrote things for Derek to do because some of the stuff that he was doing made absolutely no sense. Like, what were you going to do, Derek? Then what man do you know is in his boxers? Another man walks in. You don't go change. You don't excuse yourself. You don't put your pants on. You standing right there looking like a damn idiot in your drawers. With this other, with this lawyer dude. I'm like, what kind of father was who his own daughter? I said, Father in heaven. Get him off my screen. Get, get him off my screen. Please get him off my screen. So we find out as if it was a surprise or we didn't know that, um, what's his name? Angel was okay. Like I said, we knew he wasn't in, in, the, in the car because he only walked 2.5 seconds. We know nothing happened to him. So... <clears throat> He gets into this thing with Simone. Um, you know, he's having, he's experiencing P PTSD. You know, he's these flashbacks, these camera flashes are getting to him. Now, help me please, because Simone made a statement about, you know, Angel is mad because her career basically is popping off and his isn't. And I'm like, I'm pretty damn sure a music career is the least of his concerns and are the least of his worries. After everything this man has been through with ISIS, they came and captured him on the day of his uncle's funeral. He risked his life to get back to you. After everything that's happened, you could actually sit there and say something like that to him. And that goes to show that's just poor writing because this man hasn't talked about singing. He has not talked about a career. His damn partner or his um yeah his his partner in his group it had was was murdered was killed and that's what you can say to him and i'm just like you know but it goes to show that simone is, is 18 years old so let's not forget then fast forward to when they do the interview and he was being politically correct with his responses which i thought was very mature then we get to simone when the lady was like simone do you have anything to say and then she said what she said and ended it you know calling the man a beat or whatever and so someone asked me do i feel that Angel has a right to be mad at Simone. I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Because it just furthermore showed and proved how immature she is because of not because of what she said, but because of the platform that they are actually creating her to, to be on and how they are developing her as an artist who have a platform in these political um barriers or, or what have you and or political platforms. And this is how you're responding. Nah, I said, but that goes to show she 18, young as hell, immature as hell, and basically just saying, got diarrhea of the mouth, just saying whatever comes out. So, let me tell y'all something about Lil Dini. Lil, I know a lot of people don't like him, right? But that is my friend, and I think he is so funny. I think he's so funny. I think he's needed on the show. He's a relief in some way, but he crazy as hell. But I actually really, from the first time he appeared on the screen, I actually really do like Lil Diddy. I hope they keep him if they, um... If uh he comes back, if, if they get renewed, I want to see him on the show. I really do. I really like him. Um, uh, Rashad, we find out that that's Carlotta's son. Um, you know, it's it's just sad. You know, it's it's just sad. So now he's believing that his family does not believe in him or believe in his talent. Um. And, you know, they're just trying to protect him, basically, the music industry, unless that's, like, your passion, your heart. I don't suggest anybody get in it because it is a very toxic industry um, when you get some of the, the behind-the-scenes stuff that go on in it. So, you know, he's hanging out with Dini, and Dini called him. What he called the boy? Uh, um, a event, uh, uh, evangelist. Something he called him. It was funny. Um... Excuse me, but little Denny was funny in this episode, and and he keeps his same thing with his drinking, his weed, just the same old, same old. When they were in the club, and um, when uh, Rashad was like, 
Carlotta can kiss my and Cassie slap the hell out of him. She don't cause it's Cassie has zero cares. She, Cassie has zero cares. And um, but we know she loves her sister. She'll do anything for her sister. So when Carlotta reveals that um to Cassie that Rashad is her son, and I like the way that she did it, because she was like, you know, look at Rashad, look at look at me, and look at Daddy. And um, just just the words that the writers used for her to describe that really like hit a nerve. She didn't say, you know, look at him. Now look at, um, I forgot what his name was. What's his name? Carl on the show, her dad. I forget. It started with a C. And she was like, and then look at daddy to know that, you know, my stepfather was the one that impregnated me with this child. It, it really hit, <clears throat> it hit a nerve and it was just just sad and disgusting and you know when people do so they just don't realize how detrimental and and, and what they're doing to other people um let me tell y'all what i'm most happy about in last night's episode because the store fans were so happy about this breathless video this breathless video we saw that it was just like a pawn they just did that i guess to get people maybe to tune in because we realized it really was really no video or whatever and so <laughs> I loved reading the comments. Some people was pissed. They was upset. I know I'd be living for it because I'd be getting my entire life. I'd just be looking, laughing, and scrolling. That's it. Look, laugh, scroll, baby. LLS. That, that's it. That's all I be doing. So it, it's, it was just really funny. I thought they I thought they played that well because we all thought we were going to get this sexy, sensual um, video, and we did not get that at all. So kudos to the writers for that. Y'all did that. All right. Um, so we see that Star goes to the doctor and basically she still has no voice after about what a month I believe so she wants to get cortisone shots so that she can sing or whatever and the doctor basically told her like it's not gonna really do anything basically it, it pacifies it you know like you can have a broken leg you get it it don't fix it but you can still kind of carry on with some of your activities so she figured well hell if I can sing, let's do it. So the doctor was like, no, nah, we're not doing that. And he made a, a, a key statement. He said, I don't want to do that without first consulting with your OBGYN, which lets me know that there has to be a direct correlation between these cortisone shots and your OBGYN or what can happen if they were to actually, you know what I'm saying, do that. So I'm like, um, all right, cool. This heifer gets up. I, I saw my mom do this all the time. She goes to the drawer to get the syringes and all of this stuff like that. So the doctor runs over, basically like, heifer, oh, I told you no. It's not finna happen. But the the first time they zoomed in on that nurse, I knew she was shady as hell. And I knew she was about to do something she had no business doing. So when she went to the... Di, di, I'm like, how the hell all these people get into these record labels? You Y'all shooting a, a, a video. How normally video sets are closed. How the hell are all these random people able to, to just walk in this label and go see whoever the hell they want to see? I've yet to see a, a record label ran like that for real. So I'm like, what is it? I don't understand. I, I don't get it. But, you know, she told Star, you know, I felt bad for you, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, sometimes when a doctor is a little bit uptight, we make people make other arrangements. So, needless to say, Star, you know, got the cortisone shot from the nurse or what have you. And she was able to perform. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I thought Jude sounded really great on last night's um, performance or whatever that song was called. I thought they all did a great job. I don't know what it is, but it's so funny watching Britney dance. After that episode where she came for Gigi about we take three, like we tight, we this, we that. And so I've been really paying attention to her and I'm like, now see, writers y'all jacked up because if you're going to have Britney say that, oh, excuse me, have um Simone say that and Britney steps ain't up the part, it don't add up because I'd I be focusing on her performances since they had her say all that. But I'm just saying. But overall, I thought it was a great performance. I like the song. I think all three of them did a good job with, with their voices and things like that. I said, boy, yeah, I thought you did a great job. I, I don't have to talk about uh, Ryan Simone slash Alice because there's never been a, a performance that she didn't bring it. Um, physically or vocally she's just she always hit it like she's supposed to but I thought um Jude slash Star did a great job with her vocal performance on last night's episode um there's a lot of Star fans who don't like Noah Mama and this is the thing that get me okay when you put it in real perspective if some half of a baby mom would ever put a, a knife to your, son, your son's neck threaten his life what would your response be and this is the mother of his child. This is the mother of your grandchild. 
And what what would you number one forget the forget the grandchild for a moment? That's my baby. That's my son. I know how I am. I don't have any kids, but I know how I am about my little cousins. I will I will serve life without a question. I will serve life and wake up every morning with a smile on my face, singing a gospel song. <laughs> don't mess with family, G. Like that's what it is. Don't do that. Don't mess with family. So I understood where the mother was coming from. And she was like, you know, you my son. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm I always got you. So when she went to um <clears throat> star's house and i saw mixed you know um mixed opinion opinions about that whether or not the mother was in the wrong or whether the mother was in the right about that maybe her approach was a little different but you threatened my son's life so this is bigger than her just having an attitude with star her not liking star which she made very clear you could have killed my son what if he would have slipped what if your behind would have slipped anything could have happened but i'm going to show you that hey I'm, I'm his mom the same way you'll go about because let's not forget star went to jail about protecting her son i want you to know i would do the same thing for mine i don't give a damn who you are and i felt mama brooks on on that but star wasn't stupid star said whatever she said you know stay in your ground don't catch no bullets whatever whatever when mama brooks put that that hand around her neck and slapped the hell out of star star wasn't stupid what did she do not a damn thing. All right. She didn't hit Mama Brooks back. She didn't do none of that. So I'm like, starting no, you know, she got mouth for days. But based on her history on the show, you can't whoop nobody ass. Star, unless it's an old woman. So that's how I said it. Oh, she got Rachel. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, I think, you know, you you came at Rachel. She wasn't expecting that. So I ain't, I ain't going to even count that one. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, what else I want to talk about? What else happened? Um. Okay, <clears throat> Star and um Alex, the difference between the adoption and the abortion. Now, I'm not saying anyone's right or anyone's wrong. A woman's choice to choose is her choice to choose. The difference is with Alex, Alex just made a decision to terminate her pregnancy, okay? With Star, she carried her baby, she had her baby, um, people have fallen in love with that baby and now you're saying that you want to put your child up for adoption so not only does that affect you but it affects every it affects everyone around you not saying that alex's decision to have an abortion did not affect those you know what i'm saying around her but i think it's a difference when you when you've held a child when you've made that connection with the child when you've seen that child smile or cry and you changed his diaper and fed him and rocked them to bed you know kissed them on the cheek those things i mean that's that to me that's, that's that's different the difference another difference is i look at the circumstances alex is thinking listen I'm 19 years old. I'm trying to build my career. I'm taking care of a man who's paraplegic. How am I going to do that and take care of a baby? I get it. Same thing with Star. I get it. She doesn't want to be like her mother. She knows that she would never put her child above her career. She's concerned about Noah with his addiction. I get it. I get all of those things. And those are very real concerns. It's just the way that Star is going about it. So now that Noah is not in agreement with what she's doing, she's trying to prove that he's an unfit parent. He made, I ain't going to say a mistake, he made a bad judgment call with what he was doing. But to take that man's child, that's a whole nother level. Like That's that's a whole nother level um, to this. And that's what I think is a difference. I don't think either one is right or wrong when it comes to the thought of having um, the thought of what they want to do of the or the, the the tug of war of making those decisions to me star situation is, is just a, a little different because the father is very much um wants to be a part of the child's life wants to have custody of his child so i don't know how they're gonna do that um i i really don't i'm trying to think what else happened on um the episode oh when star slapped noah on the red carpet or what have you <sighs> same star man it's just like you know enough is enough and i'm not saying they have to change star where she's like unrecognizable or it's like nah star star won't even do that but can can we see some difference can, can we see a, a little difference um same with alex same with simone uh, a little difference we want you know simone was telling star i want you to get a baby to me i'm like hell for you nigga you can't better take care of yourself and where the hell do simone stay do you even have your own place you married I don't see her or Angel wearing no wedding ring last time I checked. Um, last time that I checked. All right, anyway. But I'm just like, I don't I don't see that. And ain't nobody finna get no baby to use Simone. You you could probably barely wipe clean yourself. Anyway, 
Um, the scene with Alex and Derek where she was trying to find the words to the song, to the track. Um, and he tried to give her like a pep talk. I just, I don't like them, man. I just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really tried. I try my. I try. I look at them from a non-biased viewpoint. I just don't like them as a couple. Like, I, there's nothing about Dalek that I like. I, there's absolutely nothing about them that I enjoy that I like or anything like that. And I have discussions with Dalek fans all the time, and I just have yet for someone to make a good point about why you like them. I mean, you like who you like. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But it's just, I don't see it. And I've tried. God, no, I have tried. It don't work, damn it. I, I don't work. I just, I don't like them as a couple. I really, really don't. The only thing I'm interested, if there is a season four, I just want to see how they rock this marriage. Like, because we know it ain't going to last. So that's that's what I'm interested about if they do get renewed, which bought up. I got a whole lot of stuff about this. I don't know <clears throat> if they're going to be renewed. We know the Empire got renewed for season six. Uh, we still haven't heard anything as of me recording a video um, on Thursday at whatever time this is. Um, there ha they have not been renewed as of yet. Um, <clears throat> I really believe this season, for whatever reason, there have been a lot of um, rewrites and reshoots. It could have been, you know, because of the loss of Quincy's mom. That could possibly be it. I'm not sure. However, just a lot of things I with this particular half of the season, I don't think was supposed to happen. And it's happening, and I, I think it definitely has affected um, the direction of the show. Um, <clears throat> someone asked my predictions for season four. If it does get renewed, I would do a video about that. I just think they need a completely different writing staff. Completely different. Like, they don't even, they don't even have to bring back people of season two. Just get people that have literally watched from season one, season two, season three, and have an in interview them. What did you think about this couple, this couple, that character? And see if you if they if you can feel their heart and not just them speaking from their mind. You want people that are emotionally invested in their writing so that we can connect with whatever the hell they trying to do. Cause it was just no connection. I'm and I'm big on that. I can't connect with it. I don't wanna I don't wanna be a part of it. I don't wanna watch it. <clears throat> um Yeah, that's how that's how that was for me. Um, trying to think what else happened on last night's episode of Star. I think we only saw Cotton once. Cotton was babysitting Davis while, you know, Star whatever was out. Um, oh, I was asked to talk about the trailer for next week. Based on what we were able to see or and based on what I saw, it looks like Cassie was shot multiple times. It looks as if Angel was shot in the chest and there was a body laying next to him. <clears throat> It, you know what what have you and i'm like star what the hell y'all like a a child's version of empire because i don't feel like all the death is needed i you know i don't want brandy to <clears throat> i don't want them to kill off cassie because a lot of people are just starting to get to like her now you know her attitude changing you can tell she's genuine with what she's doing and I would hate for them to kill her off the show like that. But then again, Cassie was a, Cassie is a killer. You feel me? So it's like, you know, sometimes the crows, <laughs> the rooster come back to crow, boo. And, you you know, you reap what you sow. So I can't be too upset because, you know, she not took out a lot of people herself. So, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, but with Angel and that body laying next to him and someone asked, do I think that... The shooting at the reception is going to trigger Alex's PTSD. I don't see why I wouldn't. I definitely can see why I would. That and you watching people get killed or being shot in front of you. Like, that's that's a whole nother level. Um, that's just a whole nother level to that. So, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, after next week's episode, I have a little bit more insight about the video, uh, my review. And, you know, how I feel what's going to happen from this point on. Um... <clears throat> When they were on the red carpet, right? And so, when Jax came out with the chick, I, forget, I think her name is Amber. When Jax came out with a chick, right? And, you know, she squeezed his butt or whatnot. And she was like, yeah, he really knows how. I think she said he really knows how to work my voice. And Star was like, yeah, like he used to work the hell out of mine too or something like that. I'm like, you know what, Star? Baby, Star is a straight up and down hole. I'm telling you. And then, when she they heard about the billionaire, Thomas, oh, anybody saw what he looked like because I need a new zaddy or whatever. And I'm like, yo, coochie. 
barely in the position to has it been six weeks yeah it's been six weeks probably yeah it's been yeah it's been just shut up stop just shut up don't ain't no billionaire gonna want to be fooled up with your crazy ass but um yeah I'm getting questions as I'm doing. I see it coming up on my um, thing, but uh, I'm sorry. I'm already doing the review. I have to come back and read the stuff later and respond to you. Um, overall, thought it was a good episode. Thought it was a great episode. I'm just tired of seeing the same things with the same people over and over and over again. Please do something different. That's why I like Lil Denny because he brings something different to the show. Um, just uh, <clears throat> just a, fre- a, 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 a breath of fresh air. That's what I really do like about him. Um, I'm trying to think what else happened on last night's episode. We didn't get to see Noah perform. You know, it was like his mom came into his dressing room and she was like, you know, good job, baby. So it was alluding to the fact that he did, but we did not, um, we didn't get opportunity to see. Another thing we didn't get opportunity to see was when Alex was saying that her father was basically talking about her in the media and I'm like, well, what is he saying? What could he really say about you? Like, you know, what is he saying? So, of course, we weren't able to see that either. So, don't really know. That It just seemed rushed when Alex had made the statement um, at a press conference or whatever about her father and the type of person, excuse me, the type of person that he is. And he won't come out and say something. She's going to make the statement herself. And then you see Derek has back to just smiling with this chest cat grin on his face and i'm like nigga what what you smiling about this ain't funny or cute whatever daddy whatever you want to do you can bring it whatever whatever and i'm like (sighs) they make me sick (laughs) they just make me sick man i don't know um i think that's i think that's it i think that's it because i'm like this this episode is really it was very like it was it was weird because i liked it but it it got on my nerves too it just got on my nerves um yeah i think i think that's i think that's everything i don't really remember a lot of stuff about this episode so i really had to write stuff down um i do want to see rashad embrace carlotta as his mother i know that ain't gonna be no quick fix especially knowing how he was birthed that he was you know uh created out of carlotta's stepdad raping her that's a lot to take in. That, that's that's a hard pill to swallow to know that that's how you were created. Um, I'm really interested in seeing what's going to happen with that. How Cotton is going to respond finding out that Rashad is her brother. That's going to be interesting. Um, uh, what, what else? <clears throat> I think that's it. I think I talked about everything pretty much. I want to talk about everything that was, uh, that came up in my mind as I sat here and did the video. If I left anything out, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can, um, comment or whatever like that. Thank you for everyone who has sent me messages. Y'all sent a whole lot and, uh, I hope I'm able to do what I have to do. Uh, as far as answering all y'all questions, another one just popped in my head. Um, how did I feel about, um, start taking the, the cortisone shots. I don't agree with it. Because first of all, you know, we know that it was just a quick fix. However, I believe in the long run, it's definitely going to affect her vocal cords. And it's going to do more to the group. <clears throat> it's going to do more detriment to the group than being a benefit to the group. Because nobody told you to take them damn cortisone shots. You should have listened to the doctor. You finna jack yourself up for doing it. It's just crazy. So I'm like I said, if they get renewed, I'm sure it's gonna be some problems as a complication from her doing that. So you know we're gonna see. I, I don't agree with it, but you know Star is always Star, and it goes to show she doesn't trust Alex and Simone to do what they have to do to carry the group until she's able to get back to herself that she can be in um, an equal part of their success right now. <clears throat> so it's, it's showing she don't trust them. It's showing that she believes she has to sing. She has to do this other than doing what's best for the group. And I hate that you got Alex who none gave up so much to keep this group together. And then every time something goes on with take three, you got to look at this this chick over here and you doing something that could, that could possibly <clears throat> cost you, excuse me, your entire career. So, you know what I'm saying? We're going to see what happened with that. But no, nah, I wasn't, I wasn't fond of that at all. I wasn't cool with that and you could tell uh uh Noah knew something like when the performance was over and the way he was clapping his hands like like something ain't right about this and once he found out you know what happened 
it was just like, Star, you just, she just, you just jacking up everything. But we're going to see what happens. Um, thank you guys for rocking with me. 35 minutes. I didn't want this video to be that long. But I appreciate you rocking with me. Um, y'all know how I do. If you like what you heard, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And I'll holler at y'all later. One.